Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Brick by Brick podcast. Today I have Brandon or Token uh, joining me here today. So we're going to ask him the same introduction question that we ask everybody. What does the green wall mean to you? Well, the green wall to me, it means family. Family before everything, you know I mean? The way heck. To treat his people is the same way I treat everybody and all my friends in my life. You know, they're just like my family. Some of my friends are even more important to me than some of my family members. I feel you that. Know? So, I mean, that's what the green wall is. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, real quick, I just want you to go over a little bit of your background. I know that, you know, you and I have talked about this before, kind of when we met and whatnot. I know that um, a lot of your introduction to Optic was around kind of your kids and stuff um, watching yeah. and all that. But uh, a couple parts to this question, I guess, like how long have you been watching Optic? And then if you just want to do like a little kind of summary of your background with gaming and, and kind of getting into Optic. And again, some of the stuff I'll, I well, already know, but the people listening do not. Right. And, and, and to me, I mean, like, like you said, I was introduced to Optic by my kids, you know, and my kids mean also my Stepkids, um, which I, we don't we don't put labels in my house, but a lot of people don't know this. But my oldest son, I'm only 35, is 20, and when he came into my life, there was trying to figure out how to bond mm -hmm. with him. And that was optic gaming or phase, you know, mostly optic because that's how I got into meeting him. I, I made up a little thing where I added Nade Shot to my uh, Xbox. You know what I'm saying? His old optic yeah. gamer tag Nade Shot. Like, yeah, man, I've known optics forever now, you know, when I just started watching them um, 10 years ago, you know, at this now at this point, that was over 10 years ago that I started watching them just to act like I knew what he was talking about. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, though. Um, I feel like that's probably a pretty common theme. I mean, I don't have any kids. I'm turning 26 tomorrow. Um, no plans for kids. Thank you. Um, but I do feel like that's probably a, a pretty common thing with like step parents and stuff. I feel like there's always like this weird period of time where bonding is, yeah. you know, kind of a pain point as much as it shouldn't be. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a pain point. I just think it's an awkward point. It's an awkward yeah. point for both of you, especially when you're a teenager and you know, you're meeting this guy who's only like not that older, much older 15. than yeah, you know, and and it's it's awkward, especially when you're still in that point in your life when you're trying to figure out what's going on with your other family, mm -hmm. and now your family, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's good that like you had gaming. Have you been gaming like your whole life for the most part? Or? Oh, my whole life, my whole life. Yeah, my my, my stepdad, had, my stepdad, for instance, was big into computers and games. Games. And we had a Commodore 64, you know, yeah, where we had the OG. play the, oh, yeah, Lemmings. You know, a lot of people don't realize where the rocket launcher and blowing yourself up in GoldenEye when it, when it says the Lemming Award comes from. Yeah. That comes from a game called the Commodore 64. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember uh, we were playing Halo like a week ago or so, and you said that you have always been kind of like a computer player. Like it's kind of what you grew up on was more computers than yeah. consoles. Um, so mm -hmm. with, with this all being said and whatnot, uh, in your opinion, outside of, you know, the family feeling and stuff, like, what do you feel like makes optic special or unique versus other organizations? Cause obviously there's some other big ones. You have phase, you have hundred thieves, you have, um, rocker now is starting to get really big subliners. Like what separates optic from mm -hmm. the pack? It's always been the same old same with optic, you know, I mean, if if you were a part of Optic back in the day, Hector brought you with him, you know, mm -hmm. wherever he went. For example, Optic Maniac, Bose, you know, uh, all those big T, Karma, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they left, it was, it reminds me kind of like some of the old school sports, you know, when Emmett Smith left the Cowboys to go play with Arizona for a couple of years. In the end, he still came home to retire as a Cowboy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? what it feels like with optic no matter what if you leave to go spread your wings hector's not it's not all business to hector he's not gonna sit there and be like oh screw that guy he's gonna be like go spread your wings just like you did with arsenies yeah you know in his mind he's just still green wall 
Yeah, and I think most of the fans kind of feel that way and get that. Like yeah. I saw on – it was a couple weeks ago or something. Someone was like trying to talk some trash on Twitter, on YouTube comments or something about uh, – I want to say it was maybe about Clay. And like someone else got on this guy and was like, look at Clay played for Optic. He's a Green Wall member. Like he's an Optic member. You support yeah, him. Day. Like once you've played for us once, and- that's all it takes. Yeah, and then that's exactly it. It's, it's like, remember when I started up my Twitter, I used to do this thing every once once in a while. It would be like, let's, spot, let's spotlight an old Greenwall member. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've spotlighted uh, Clayster. I've spotlighted our cities. I've spotlighted tons of people. <laughs> you know, I don't spotlight the people that were on the, in my opinion, the fake optic. Yeah, optic LA. You know, I mean, sorry. Yeah, that's not my thing. Yeah, I mean, that's a question that I, I asked um, in season one a lot was like, I kind of stopped asking it because I feel like it was kind of obvious, but it was like, what did you do during like the dark days of Optic um, after the whole acquisition and, and Optic LA? The reason I stopped asking is because pretty much everyone said the same thing, which was they just followed them to the Huntsman and then followed them back yeah, to Optic. I followed, followed all, the, all the OGs and what they were doing and watched their videos and their streams. But anybody else that got added on from that era, I was like, if it wasn't a Hector, you know, thing, it wasn't, it wasn't anything. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, th- like I said, that's like one of the reasons I stopped asking. I was like, I think everybody, like yeah. all the, all the real optic fans kind of see it that way. So it seemed like a kind of pointless question um, after asking it over and over and over again. Um, the new question should be think about what do you think about the new merger? Yeah, yeah, you I did know, talk about that, that be- in the first episode with Walter Nader, because um, it was, I mean, one, it was the first episode, two, it was still kind of yeah. fresh, it was like at the beginning of the year, um, but every, even that, like, everyone I've talked to, like, I've yet to talk to anyone that's been worried about the merger, or thinks that it's been a bad play. I'm not worried about the merger, I'm worried about how the Green Wall and the Envy vans handle the merger. So far, you know, I mean, from what I experienced at the major, so far, it was so, phenomenal. Yeah, you know, there's always those diehard envy fans that are like, "Oh, well, there have always been our sworn enemies," and that, and that has always been something that I've been like about because just like, for example, when NRG happened, mm-hmm. I was pumped about that. Yeah, I was pumped. I didn't think it was something that was going to last. And he's too much of a a business businessman mm-hmm. and to allow to allow Hector to get Optic back and to be like, like yo, we're gonna give you 50-50 on all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I mean, I feel like you know like I feel like it's more so maybe like newer fans to Call of Duty that got introduced to competitive right when the league was forming and were Empire fans. I feel like anyone I've talked to that's been that was an Envy fan from back in like Black Ops One to like the old older games. I feel like anyone that was an Envy fan then understands the relationship between Optic and Envy enough to just see this as being a good thing. But some of the newer fans I feel that like, like anybody who's on Reddit is just it's just gonna hate anything that happens on anything. That's true. That's about the only internet trolls. In- yeah, the only people that are talking anything bad about it are the people on Reddit. Yeah, which is fair. I mean, I don't, I don't spend too much time on the Optic subreddit. Not as much as I feel like Man, I should. I, I don't use Reddit that much. Like Reddit's just, not a go-to social media for me. Twitter, no. Twitter's my jam. Like Twitter remains Twitter. my favorite social media platform. Um, a hundred percent. I just don't know how I got to where I am on Twitter. Except that, like, and like how it doesn't going from Twitter into YouTube or into any other social media, it's the hardest one to merge over. It doesn't your always translate. I feel like it really depends on your foundation of your Twitter account, like what exactly yeah. that Twitter account is about, and then how you're gonna do other stuff. Sometimes the translation mm-hmm. works. I just I. I wouldn't say it's more difficult. I just think it's different. Like, it's like the weird thing, like different, I don't know. Yeah, different content, different platforms all pop off differently. Yeah, it's like ever since I started content, it's it's not 
moving up as quickly. You yeah. Know, like, there's like, it's like off my fan base a little bit. Yeah. Um, so let's ask this, um, while we're on the topic of optic and, and fans and all that sort of stuff, who is your favorite, mm -hmm. um, optic member currently? And who is your all time favorite? Now I know this, uh, that you've listened to a couple episodes, you know, that it can be anybody player, content creator, mm -hmm. cameraman. The only person that cannot be is Hector. <laughs> the only person that can't be is Hector. That's a hard one for a guy who's 35 years old. Um, let me see. My favorite current one is going to have to be, I mean, this is going to be, this is be, so fucking. It could, it's, it could it's be, be Hastro. <laughs> I just realized after the merger, like people could start saying Hastro if they wanted to. Yeah, but anyway, anyway. I can't say Hastro. Anyway, Scumpy? I, 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 no, I'm not going to go with Scumpy. I'm actually going to say it. It's going to be a little weird because he gave me the cold shoulder the first time I ever I ever met him, but it's going to be Dashy. I just okay. love his vibe. I wouldn't have said that last year. I would not have said that last year, but his vibes lately have been amazing. And right now, currently, he is my favorite player. Even on the vlogs, on Hex's vlogs, on the podcast, he just has this chill demeanor about him lately that's, that's really gave off a good vibe. Yeah. I don't know where that comes from. Um, that's also what, in the last episode with Jamie, his favorite player is Dashy. And we talked about, like, how quickly Dashy matured as a player. And they talked about it on, like, the Optic podcast or in the pre-show or or in process, maybe just like how quick he focused yeah. up and just like just matured as a player. I, I think he just needed to shine, man. I think, I think on the other teams, he was more looked at as the younger player, even when Envoy was there. Mm -hmm. He was looked at as the lesser of maybe not the lesser, but even as far as a fan, I just looked at it like they were always spotlighted Envoy more than they spotlighted Dashy. I think they needed to take on some of that role, man. Yeah. Some of that leader I role. I don't know what it was. I mean, I'm interested to hear, like he said, like formal played a really big role, like mentoring him and stuff. Yeah. So like, I'm interested like how that dynamic works, but I also feel like something that Rambo just kind of brings to the table is like a certain level of seriousness. And yeah, like, I don't know what it is. Like I, I've been a big fan of Rambo for years. I, I did think about him in my list of favorite guys, but if I can say anything about, about another optic member, that's really, I mean, you have your current and right you now. also have an all time. Yeah. But my all time is going to go to Nate shot, bro. Okay. That's valid. Um, that's, that's just gonna, that's that. That's the guy that, that bonded me and my, my oldest son. Yeah. So that's that's definitely it. And he's not my favorite currently. I think he – but definitely Rambo Rambo is, is, is good vibes. Yeah. See, I like I said, I've been a big <laughs> fan of Rambo for – that major. Yeah. Like, I, I, I was with you in that crowd at that major when Rambo came out. was like, what? You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was good. Like, because I've seen Back him, a, oh. I've seen him play for Optic. I've seen him play for Envy. I've seen him, mm -hmm. you know, on the dev side. I've seen him. I've followed his career now for for ten years. Like, I've yeah. always been a big fan, especially of his attitude towards it. Like the whole uh, losing is mm -hmm. learning, winning is teaching mentality. And like, I feel like on top of that, he's also at the age now where it's like respect to an extent is kind of given it's like okay i need to listen to this dude he's got 10 years on me I like i don't think it's an either bro i think respect is just due yeah you know i, I mean, mean to be yeah this guy literally goes damn near is, professional in everything he tries like and he's won <laughs> everything he, tries. he got a chip with optic didn't he or am i wrong about that um a chip with optic um yeah one for three Mono for three, they got all the chips. Yeah, Mono for three, they got yeah. all the chips. And chips with multiple other organizations. Except for, except for the Blackpool event when they opened up the garage on Scumpy and he costed. <laughs> and he lost full. Yeah. Rambo lost full. I'm a big fan happened. of Rambo, but I feel like for Dashy, I feel like the 
the combination of probably Rambo as a coach saying, hey, we got to lock it in, and also some mentorship from formal. Like, I feel like that dynamic is probably what. Well, and and he, he is a little bit older now, too. Ellie and Scotty at one point, wasn't Ellie like – I think yeah, I think um Dash- I don't know so much about Shotzi, but I'm pretty sure yeah. Illy I'm pretty sure Dashie yeah. and Illy played together a lot, like kind of before they broke out. I think they yeah, were on the up and exactly. coming together. And so I think the vibes are also kind of there. there. Most definitely. Um speaking of the event and everything, um, I don't know if I've asked this before to you, but have you been to an event? I was at Major Five. Oh, that's right. That's right. We have talked about that. Yeah. I, that was the first and only event so far in my in my That is one hell yeah. of an event though. That's one that I really wish I could have gone to. I don't know if it's in like my top I, really wish I, gone to I don't know if it's in like my top three that I wish I would have gone to. Um definitely top five though. Like that event I, seemed I, I promise you this, and I think this is actually when I found out that you went to that one. I promise you it was better than champs that year. Oh yeah. Most definitely. Everything was better than champs that year. Yeah. Like not <laughs> even because of like playing and placement, but like the vibe was off at champs. It was, the vibe was off because you were still doing COVID man. Yeah. And, and like, it was in California, was, which is a state that has taken COVID a lot more seriously. Um, yeah, I don't major five though. That, Man, what an event. I'm kind of jealous for your what first an, event. Like, what an event. Um, we didn't get the win, though. But, man, were you on your toes that whole event, yeah. bro? I mean, back, uh, it was such a rough one, too. But I, 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 I met so many people there, and that's also what brings me back to the family of, of, of the Green Wall. You know what I'm saying? I mean... Just like like Hector says, it's like you go out there and you and you run into other breaks, and it's like you guys just know each other. You know, I like I bet you had the same experience here in Dallas this last event. Yeah, people were giving you rides. People were wanting you to come sit by them. People were wanting to hang out. You know, it's interesting. This is the first time I've thought about it this way. But like, there's everything that you're saying. Um. But, like, one thing I keep looking back on when I think about this Texas event is, like, that classic Texas slash Southern hospitality that everybody always talks about, right? But there is a similarness to that in Southern California events, most specifically Anaheim. Not necessarily on hospitality, but, like, Anaheim and areas of Southern California, like Huntington Beach, which is where I kind of grew up, are so laid back and chill. Yeah. They're busy. Like they're they're fast paced. Like it's still, you know, Orange County. It's one of the densest, most densely populated places in the country. But like there's a certain level of kind of like beach bum chilled out to it. That it's I don't know. It, it's yeah. the first time I've thought about it this way. But like I feel like when you meet people that are into optic and into gaming, like I don't know. You feel like you've known them for for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, man, but one of my best friends is somebody I've never met. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't have Um, that. I I do have like a couple of people that I gamed with way back in the day that, like, we're not in touch anymore, but at some point it would have been really cool to meet them. Um, And there's definitely a lot of relationships I've formed over the last like year or two that are like that. Like, there are certain people from Twitter that I really want to meet. Yeah, most definitely, man. And I think it's just because when you're on the internet, you can just be so much more open yeah. with, with people. You don't, you're not worried about you're going to have to run into them in the real world. And you know, I have a, go ahead. I had a friend that, that, that got me into Call of Duty, which led me into, which also led me into a lot of the optic stuff. Mostly it was my kids, but he, I started playing Call of Duty with him way before that and i never ever have met this guy and i've known him now for over you know 12 years yeah he's one of my best you friends. still never met him no, Damn, never met that's him, crazy see yeah. um i mean we're supposed to this year we're supposed to this year but well, i hope it happens you know yeah i don't know um i'd probably say like right now out of everybody 
that I'd like to meet. Big shout out to uh, Avenger. Was it Avenger seven three two? As I think, as a gamer tag. Yeah, he keeps he, talking. I've been on multiple like calls with him and stuff. Like he's a uh, super dope dude. He actually bought me. He occasionally sends me like a hookup on some old merch and stuff. Um, being a fellow collector. <laughs> And he actually uh, sent me a link this morning. I woke up 25 minutes after he texted it to me. Three hour difference. He's East Coast. I'm I'm West Coast. Right. So I woke up 25 minutes after he texted it to me. But it was an original. Like it was. It looks like maybe a 2014 um, green wall shirt. So basically that flag, but the 2014 right. design. He sent it to me because we've talked a lot, and he knows that I lost my 2013 one from Anaheim. In a house fire when my house burned down in 2014. And so he sent me the link and I woke up 25 minutes late and I opened it and I was like, ah, like I'm 25 minutes late. Like someone bought it. Like whatever, you know, it's a size small. Like I wear a medium, like I'm not going to be too bad about it. And he sends me a screenshot. He's the one that ordered it to me. He's having it sent to my house. He's like, bro, I, I, knew, <laughs> you're, I knew you lost yours in a fire. I couldn't pass it up. Like I didn't want to risk it. Awesome, yeah, man. Like, That's all. That dude's a good guy. He's a great, great dude. And so like, I Venmo'd him for, you know, however much it was worth. Um, yeah, like that was the beginning of my day. And, you know, after a long day at work, I forgot that even happened until now. So. Hey, man, that's, that's the thing about yeah. the green wall, right? Yeah, he's probably like the number I'm one dude you, off Twitter that I would, uh, that I'd love to meet. And anybody that's listening right now, if you guys don't know who this dude is, go check back to season one, one episode is it two or three? Ooh, I'm choking. I think it's season two. The Optic Collector. It's it's yeah. He's um the collector is the name of the episode. But go check that out. Awesome, <laughs> awesome dude. Um, moving on. Right, we're talking about meeting people. We're talking about content. Talking about Optic. If you could join Optic in any way, shape, or form, whether it be pro player, content creator, streamer, podcast host, cameraman. Shoe shiner, I don't care. What would you like to do if you could work for Optic? I would like to relieve them of their DoorDash bill and be their chef. Oh, that yeah, I should have seen that answer coming a mile away. Damn. Mostly because I get so mad at the fact that they DoorDash all the time. Everything. You know, I mean, DoorDash, I get it, guys. It's your sponsor. But when that food gets there, it's definitely not as good as if it was right off of the out of the kitchen at the hex quarters i'm just Facts. saying i'll come out there and bring out a smoker i've even texted x or texted him on twitter several times let's do a tailgate um i'll so do it all you've done a lot of cooking how many years did you i mean i guess you're 10 years you're not like retired from cooking necessarily no. um 15 years Years is there here here's a couple of questions chef related because i i wouldn't consider i, I consider myself like a, a minor home chef that being said i've made a couple of pretty fire beef wellingtons which is one of the most difficult dishes to nail according to the food industry um or the i, I guess the restaurant industry not the food industry so that being said what I guess. are do you feel like you have like certain things that you've specialized in more so? Yeah, farm to table. I really love farm to table cooking, man. I think it's a way less wasteful. Yeah, and it facts. brings you back to, to to the earth. You know, I mean, it's back to the way that we were meant to eat. You, you know, know, right off of our garden. You know, it's kind of uh, weird about that. Is like I've never bought into the whole like oh you should know where your food comes from you'll appreciate it more that whole thing i've never bought into it what changed that minorly but like it definitely i i went into this thinking like yeah whatever i'm just trying to save some money um but it's when i started like buying whole chickens and joining them myself just because like it's way cheaper to do it that yeah. way um way cheaper. plus i really yeah, like the process of cooking like if i'm I'm either going to eat like fast food and like cheap or like I'm going to get way too involved in like the meal making process. Um, so like it became pretty routine to like go buy like two to four chickens and like spend, you know, 15 minutes just joining them all out and everything. And like 
separating everything. And I went, you know what? Like, I never thought I'd be the type of person to find that better, that like higher appreciation for where the food comes from. But like, I definitely did. I recommend anybody, if you have never joined at a chicken, it's probably like the easiest, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've probably cooked way more than I have, but I feel like a chicken's got to be one of the easiest things to part out. Yeah, I guess. I mean, fish is pretty easy. I haven't done, I haven't done fish, like deboning and like all that. Like, it's I feel totally it looks pretty easy. Like, I've seen videos and stuff. Like, it I mean, looks it I looks like demoning. The most it's what you learn in school. Yeah, I feel like deboning would take some time a little bit. Just... No, not really. I mean, most of your, like, it depends on the fish, most definitely. Yeah, it's true. It's definitely not. You're going to cut most well, of the I guess, stuff out. You're going to yeah. bone as much as you want. You think. Um, but what, it also depends on what kind of salmon you get. So. Yeah. So farm to table. Um, is there a type of, like, food? Cuisine? Yeah, is there a type of cuisine that, like, you've not really spent a lot of time around, but you would like to get more involved with cooking and stuff? Indian cuisine. That's I love valid curry. as fuck. And, and I've never really cooked Indian it, but, was, but Indian food is fire. Fire. And it has so many spices and stuff that I've never even just got to mess with. I've messed with it a little, little bit. But there's so many like home techniques. I feel like that it are, seems like, exotic. Yeah, it's exotic, man. Like I feel like it's not, it's but ex- like it seems like it is. I feel like it's probably a lot easier than what I think it is. It just the the the, the amount of flavor that comes out of an Indian dish yeah. is just it is. I just wonder where it all comes from. It is you know flavor packed, like yeah. What's your favorite kind of food? I'm just going to screw Italian. the optic questions. We're just asking food questions. Italian? It's Italian? I've had some pretty fire Italian. My brother-in-law's mom was born in Italy. They make a lot of like... Look at you, man. Do I look, <laughs> look, I look like a guy that eats pasta all the time. Yeah, I've had some. Um, they, make, they make some fire like restaurant. homemade. What was that? It's my favorite to eat at like, at like a restaurant or at somebody's house. Like I'm always going to go back to like italian food but i can't live without tacos i feel like i could eat tacos every See, single that's that's day. me with mexican food like being born and yeah. raised in southern california like it's i tell everyone i'm like listen mm-hmm. i might not have it in my blood but i was born and raised as like a mexican like mm-hmm. the out of all my friend group like i have a couple of people that like i kind of trust their taco recommendations but i'm like i have some pretty high standards and I live in Northern California yeah. now, and like you get a lot less authentic the further away from the border you get, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I feel that living down in Texas, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Hex goes up there and talks about Dallas tacos. Like, you, he'll, he'll, he'll take a picture of a taco he ate in Dallas. You know what I'm some saying? Some of them I'm do like, look pretty good, but like, I, I don't know. Dallas tacos. Um, Italian. Tacos. I definitely have an appreciation for Italian, but I. I always tell people, like, for me, Mexican food's number one. And, like, seafood's probably mm. number two. I do yeah. love me some seafood. I would go, I'd go Italian, Mexican, Chinese. Yeah, okay. See, that's another, I was going to say when you were talking about, like, how flavor-packed guys, Indian food Reggie. is. Like, I feel like Asian cuisine is equally as flavor packed as Indian. It's just completely different. I don't know. I don't know dude. Different. Indian has so much flavor in it. Yeah, Cause you can get a bland ramen, man. I've had a blonde, uh, a really bland ramen before. I have never you know? had Indi- like even non bread somehow is packing. Never- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've never. Damn, had I haven't had Indian food take. in a minute. We only have a couple places in my area that are Indian food. The one thing, Our okay, so this is so this is something I talked to uh, um, a lot of like my Asian coworkers. Is like I like good flavor, but I don't necessarily have a good gauge on authentic when it comes to Asian food. Like I have a decent gauge on authentic <laughs> Italian, just because I have close. Um, like I said, like my brother-in-law's mom was born in Italy. Like she literally just moved back from Italy. Um, 
Mexican food, Mexican food. I have like a lot of good authentic, uh, authentic. I don't even know what words are. Um, I have a lot of experience with like authentic Mexican food. I don't have a lot of experience with authentic Asian food. Like I tell, I'm like, I think Panda Express tastes good. I know for a fact it's not authentic. Like um, it doesn't taste over, bad. Well, everything that I've ever gotten told is that it's way less greasy. Yep. I've been told there's a lot less yeah. meat typically. I don't know, man. I feel like that could be like kind of regional too, though. Yeah, I guess, I guess it would definitely depend on what part of uh, of Asia you're Asia's in. If, you know, a big fucking place. It's a big fucking place. See, I think, <laughs> I think like the area that I've just like never really messed with is like French cuisine. Like you mess with it, you just have to, everything revolves around French cuisine. I like it's like I feel like it's like the heart and like basis of most traditional chef cooking, like traditional restaurant. I feel like stems yeah, from French American cuisine. From French but cuisine. like, I don't know. I Somehow I feel like I feel like I've never I've never gotten like the heart of it, like the core. Like I've yeah. tasted all the branches. But I ain't been to like the truck. Are uh, based upon upon French cuisine sauces, bro. Yeah, Bushmel, your sauces, all oh, that no. stuff. I'll tell like, you what, you though, have- if you could go, if you could go anywhere in the country to experience food, where would you go? I know my answer. New York. New York. For me, it's New Orleans, and here's why. Basically, yeah, if you look up, like... I've been there already, so... I I kind of figured you maybe have been there. I don't know why I made the assumption, but I did. I I love New Orleans food, but I've I've never been, like, in New York City, 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 city. See, my reason for New Orleans is, like, if you look up any list of, like, the best food hubs in America... New Orleans is number one on every single list. It's usually the same yeah. places in the top five, but two through five vary in where they are. Number one is always New Orleans. You'll see, yeah. you'll see like Chicago. You'll see somewhere in Southern California. You maybe San Francisco, maybe New York. Like you'll see, you'll see Houston and, and Austin. Yeah, and a lot of those. New I York. would take New York. The uh, one thing, like, like I've never had like an authentic it, like Philly cheesesteak. I've never had like a yeah. real authentic like East Coast pizza. Uh, like I've had what I've you. I've had what I think is like really good pizza, but I'm like I I want like a New York pizza. I want like a Chicago fucking pizza, like a New York. I have a funny story. I used to sell um when when streaming was really really fucking starting off. There used to be this thing called Shoutcast. And I used to sell Shoutcast servers. Shoutcast sounds wildly familiar. Uh, if, if there was a social media site called Foobar, uh, and people would like have chat rooms in those places, and they would have DJs that played music off their Shoutcast servers. Okay. And I was really scrubby at life, and I was I was on my like last couple of dollars, didn't have nothing, nothing to eat with that day. And I, 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 I had somebody hit me up for a shoutcast server. So I was like, yeah, order me a pizza from Brother Bruno's in New York and you can have it for the year. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, he had a Brother's Bruno's pizza from Port Jervis, New York, sent to me just so he Damn. could have a shoutcast server for the Damn. All right. See, so yeah, yeah. uh, Avenger actually, he told me, and there's like, I can't remember the name of it, but apparently there's some spot in like Jersey that's like his favorite like pizza place. Ah, uh, dude, pizza in New York is good, man. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I just feel I'm like there's. Louis. Where are you from? We have a pizza there, St. Louis. Okay. So I mean, I've been to Chicago. I've had Chicago pizza, deep dish pizza. Yeah. Delicious. Like I've had deep dish pizza, but like I don't trust the authenticity of it in Northern California. Like, I like picking up because it looks like barely picking up. Um, here it, it cut out a little bit right there. Not bad. 
Yeah. Um, I, so I've had deep dish pizza from New York or Chicago. I'm sorry. I've had outside the city of New York, New York pizza. So I don't know if that really counts to some people. Maybe it does. It, it might. Um, I don't. I don't know. I think people, when they talk about New York pizza, they're talking about New York City, city. Yeah. And I was like an hour from the city. But I'm from St. Louis, and we have a pizza place there called Emo's Pizza. And, uh, oh, my God, nothing beats it to me. Really? See, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where, like, my favorite pizza spot is. I feel like well, I don't, I eat, don't a, I feel like I eat a lot of pizza, but somehow I don't eat a lot of pizza. I don't know. I just feel like... Uh, you never hear pizza out of California. Now I hear no, there's no, a no, pizza no. spot you, in California. You hear, I feel like you hear about obviously Mexican food, and I feel like sometimes you'll hear about like a, like I feel like a California burger is pretty well known, um, or like a California style burger. Yeah. Tri tips well known. Yeah, but like you'd never hear California pizza. That's not a fucking thing. No, that's not California. Place in in a lot of places. There's like some fucking chain California pizza place that I see every once in a while. But no, I don't know. But also, California is a giant state. Like, there's it really is. It really is when you think about it. It's the third biggest state in the country. Second biggest in the it's lower forty eight. Like it's it's just long and narrow. Versus Texas is just huge. One of the smallest. Yeah. Once it keeps off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> all right um let's circle things back away from food i like that segment though i'm a big foodie so like i, I can always talk about food if, you, if there's a few things i can always talk about it's food movies basically just food uh, movies in optic i was supposed to see that before with our the fantastic East fantastic beast the new tonight. one yeah Dude, Monday, Batman hits HBO Max. I cannot fucking wait. Oh, I'm hyped for it. Bro, I'm going to watch it. I'll I'll probably watch it two or three times on Monday. But with this, I don't know if I can watch it. Why not? I'm on Hex's boat with this one, bro. Bro, I don't know. I'm on Hutch's boat. You're on Hutch's boat? Yeah. My son is too much. I I have a weird thing with like Hutch when it comes to movies because... I feel like sometimes he has some really bad takes that I just can't get behind. But other times I feel like he like nobody nails it better than he does. Just can't trust a man that puts a cat on a leash. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but his I, I'm on Team Hutch when it comes to Batman. Um My son is too, man. My son is too, because he went and seen it and said it was a great movie. It's fine. Like uh, so I think at the very least, for people that are skeptical, if you haven't watched it yet, by the way, at the time of this podcast uh, recording, today is uh, April 15th. Um, if you've not seen Batman yet, um, go into it thinking just like just try to appreciate it as like a film. Not necessarily as like a Batman story. I think it's an amazing Batman movie. But at the very least, it's a fucking incredible movie. Like... That's what I heard. I heard there was it's, some the cinematography fame. is like the best I've seen in the last fucking five to yeah, ten years. The cinematography is pretty untouchable. Scene. Um coming in and I keep hearing is fucking like one of the best scenes in movie history. The score the- is really good, but I think in the last ten years the best score is hands down interstellar. It's pretty unfuckwithable. Um I have yet to watch that movie. It's I watched it. On accident, I kind so of. Bad about it. I kind of watched it on accident. Like it, it was like one in the morning, two in the morning, or something. And I, I generally like space and and everything like that. Um, there's there's a reason Astro is in my name. Uh, but I put it right. on like, oh, I just need like a slow space exploration movie to like fall asleep to in the background. And I was up at like five in the morning, like. Oh my god, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. That shit had me hooked, and I was like, I guess I'm not sleeping tonight. Yeah, it, I guess I gotta watch it. It is really good. Watch it. Um, if you have seen Imitation, um, only once. I did think it was really good. Um, I I want to watch it again. I just didn't. 
There's so many things to watch. So many but most movies, watch, most movies I watch twice. First is like usually just enjoyment. I just watch it to like watch it. Usually the second time I'll start looking at like all the little details and especially with like Marvel movies, that's where I'll start looking at like all the little Easter eggs and stuff is on the second viewing. Um, I think I think it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Which one? Love. Yeah, that's a good movie. One of my top five for me, top five movie for me is Snatch. That's hands down my favorite Guy Ritchie movie. Um, oh yeah, I, it definitely. took me two years to watch Gentleman, but Gentleman was also phenomenal. But Snatch, it was. I literally, I was disappointed in the end. I, I mostly liked the end. I liked that Colin Farrell had a very similar pikey ending to the ending of Snatch. Yeah, yeah like I, I, I just liked. I, I, I appreciated I the parallels to Snatch. Just because I like Snatch so yeah. much, but like I literally quote Snatch on a daily I think basis. I gotta watch those. I think I gotta watch those movies like back to back next to each other to Snatch and get Gentleman a good comparison. Because I I need to watch Gentleman again just so I can pick up on more one liners. But I will take to the grave with me that no movie has more one liners in it than Snatch. I can I can I can like that. I can. I, I feel like that's almost non debatable. It's got a fucking lot of one-liners. Got a lot of one-liners. What about Pulp Fiction, though? Um, I've actually not seen it enough to like be able to call it back. Like Snatch, I could, I could probably quote ninety percent of Snatch. Like crazy, yeah, That's absolutely crazy. But I also, yeah. I'm one of those people though that like I'll watch a movie like once and be able to quote a lot of it. Like, I'll just remember. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I fucking love movies. Okay, let's circle it back. We tried to circle it back once. We got distracted from food, went straight to movies. What, we'll it for are, 45 minutes. what are your top three favorite moments in optic history? These can be championships. They could be pieces from a fucking hex vlog. But your top three favorite moments in optic history. X Games. Okay. X, one of my favorites. Go second. X Games, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I have three. Damn, that's so hard, man. Major one was is top current, current, current one. Okay. This last major. It's because I think it's been so long and it was. I didn't two. realize like the gravity of how many days were between Optic Championships. Yeah. Most what was definitely. it, 1183? That's pretty damn... Uh, th- 1138. One of the, yeah. Still, it's a long time. It's one of the, It's a long fucking time, man. And and then, you know what I'm, what I'm gonna say, and this is probably gonna be a hot take, and I might lose some people for this one. The merger. Okay, no, no, we heard that, um... When, who said, did Jamie just say that? Someone just said that as well. The merger, or I no, think no, I think I think Jamie that. said that, and his reason was he had a friend that was an Empire fan, and like now they get to be fans together instead of rivals. Yeah, that, and I, I'm I'm gonna reverse that, and I'm gonna say when Hex pulled that chain out. When, okay, when, when it came through, I gotta respect that. When Hex pulled that chain back out, man, I gotta respect that. I cried. I, I, cried I, I don't like, cry. But it got me close. It takes. I, I, I didn't like tear, like cry, cry. I had tear, tear, a tears yeah. come to my eyes. I'll, I'll get to that I'm brink saying. a lot, but like, I don't know what it is. I just never, it takes so much for me to like actually let myself cry. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a guy, like, I'm, as you can see, I have tattoos from other places that most people don't go to in their life. Yeah. But, uh, so I don't cry very often, but this, that like wanting to have something like losing the most important thing to your life. I don't know what my like this it, segment used to be so motivational. Yeah. You know? Like you lose it, but like that's a real comeback story. You know what I'm saying? It is. That's like a champ. That's a champion who gets knocked down, like, and everybody's like, he's never gonna do it again. He's never 
never gonna do it again. And then he just fucking goes and snatches it. I mean, I says that's my one of the most viewed videos on the channel is my optic tribute video, um, which I think mm -hmm. was decently executed. My big claim to fame on that video is revitalized liked it and i love the work that he's done on montages um but when that when i made that video it's like i didn't i thought optic was done like i thought it was just yeah. gonna be the shell of a brand forever Dude, he sold it i'm not gonna lie i i was i was devastated because i at that point that's that's I when, was when gonna he go get sold the majority like, stake I wasn't that mad about it. I thought, okay, more money, more resources. When I saw what that turned into, I was pretty devastated. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly how I'm saying. When he sold it, I'm like, let let's finally get that. Like he's getting out with envy. Let's finally get that money behind us. Let's, let's roll this shit out. You know what I'm saying? And let's fucking fire off. And then like months went by and nobody was fucking. Yeah. Posting anything, See, I, bro. I used to ask this question and then I would fill it in with my top three, except my top three were always changing. I, I kind of turned it into the segment where I just, well, I turned it into the segment where like, I just kind of mentioned nostalgic things that have happened just so that people can like, guess, get a little bit of nostalgic happiness. But now I feel like if I were to actually choose a top three, like if I like not, if I were to choose like top three, like just things, IW champs, Hex getting it back. I don't know what number, number three would be. I feel like fucking picking uh, two is always three. so fast. What? Because I have, I have another one that's kind of goofy. Hit me. When they dropped a 5X jersey. <laughs> when, what was that? This one right here. Just this year. Was that this year? 10 years. Optic fan. I finally got to buy a fucking piece of jersey, a piece of merchandise other than a fucking hat. Damn. See, I do feel like there's, is, there's a lot of big boys in the space that don't get love from the merch. Dude, I, like when, when Bose added me on, on fucking on, on Twitter, bro, the first thing I messaged him was, bro, does this mean I get to get a 5X? Like, you're going to drop Rich and Lonely at 5X? <laughs> Like that's all I gotta ask, bro. Yeah. No, like I'm I'm a um community manager in the create supply discord. That's a pretty common question. It's like a lot of people ask for like three, four, five X. Like I don't know. Yeah, just give me Yeah. But on IW champs. Like, Tech's getting getting optic back. I don't know if it's necessarily a top three, but it is something it's probably in my top five would be the final goodbye, like the final vision episode um, of Hex leaving optic and like joining NRG. Um, that was a mostly good one. because one, it's phenomenally well executed, but two, like full circle. When that video came out, I was like sad. And like, I made like the green wall tribute video. And I was like, man, there's like, almost 10 years of memory is just not necessarily gone, but like it's done. But now like when he got it back, I got to rewatch that video with like hope and inspiration and like, Oh, we're back. So like, yeah, did he get I don't know if it's top three, it's like top five. That movie will bring me like to the brink of, or that, not that movie. It is a damn movie. What am I saying? Um, is, that it one is, will get me bro. teary eyed. It's that it's was my alarm, code, dude. My alarm clock for uh, for a solid minute was that song. Um, can't think of the name of it. Uh, when I was gone or something like that. It's by uh, Chad Lawson. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. That sounds like Chad Lawson. Um, I, am I messing with the camera? Because it's good. No, keeps no, inviting me. No, you're good. Um, can't Are think of it. Oh no, it's the song's by Chad Lawson, though. It's the piano song in the final goodbye vision episode. Yeah, Crossroads 2. Dude, that was such a good episode. Vision is so un like, no, it's not underrated. It's not, yeah, underrated. I think it's properly rated. 
I think, and I and I think he said, I, I will I will argue with Hex that that smooth competition is better than Vision. I so I think for him, as far as Vision, I think for him, like it's it's more of a business thing. It was such a big thing to like your optic gaming. And like you helped launch a product for Pepsi and you committed, I think the big thing for him, why it's his favorite piece of content is that they committed to 52 weeks. Like what's, what's the fucking meme. All right. When's vision coming out? When's the process coming out? Like it's a meme because you don't know there's months between it sometimes, but the fact that they committed to 52 weeks of videos that were high quality and they actually did that. And on top of that, they helped launch a product for Pepsi, one of the largest companies in the world. There's a lot more weight behind Smooth Comp than Vision. I think Vision is, well, is well, 10 times the emotional story and roller coaster and, and everything. But most the weight behind Smooth Comp, I, I think, is what gives it the number one for him. And the fact that really nobody yeah. nobody else has done something like that. No. Like no. even to this day, yeah, where, well, whereas yeah. on the opposite of that with vision, yeah. other yeah. brands have done their version of vision. Right. You know, you have unfazed, you uh, have and shit. We're going all over the place. That's how it goes, man. That's why I love this podcast. That's why I love podcasts. Um it's so good, man. I'm telling you, it's the number one fan based podcast in esports. Say for the people on the back. Um, all right, let's wrap it up with a couple more optic related questions, and then um we'll just kind of BS for like another like 20 minutes or so after that. Um, if you can meet one uh, person um, from Optic, who would it be? And does your answer change if you get to hang out with them for a day rather than just meet meet them real quick? Mm, that's a tough question, bro. Um, it does change if I get to hang out with them for a bit. I think that's an interesting it twist on it because mine. once I added that twist, I realized mine also changes. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would want to hang out, and this is gonna sound stupid, but it's so important in my life um, with Bose. Okay. Be- and and that would be just because I would want to smoke with Bose. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the person that I would want to meet and like actually like spend spend time with would be Hitch. Okay. I think that his story is one of the greatest stories in esports. Yeah. Um, and I think what he's done and where he's gotten is so inspiring. Have you ever seen the video of him um, reminiscing with TST about him joining Optic? It's like a 30 or 40 minute video or some shit. I haven't seen that one, but did you just see I'll the video from Dexerto? Dexerto that just I've came out. I've not watched that him? one, actually. From fan oh to... God. Yeah, I've actually not watched that one. I haven't made time for it yet. I've been meaning to. Oh. Um, I want to know if there's any... Mm. There's probably a lot of similarities, but I'll send you the one if if you have like, you know, 30-ish minutes to he kill one day. It's personal, which you, don't get to, which you don't get to see a lot of. Yeah. That's okay. how this one so is because it's at the the one I'm talking about is at the beginning of like he had probably been in optic for only a couple years at this point and he hadn't really grown mm. TST yet so it's really just mm. like him bullshitting yeah, with Blake yeah, and George true. and it's it's super laid back it's a super personal conversation of just like him and his best friends talking about like man like you remember when I joined and like I texted you like holy shit I just like it's it's such a good I'm gonna link that in the description below anyone that's like listening or watching I fucking recommend you go listen to this video of Hitches it is it's probably my single favorite thing that Hitch has ever released actually and my introduction to Hitch was on the Sticks Live with Kingdom Soldier and Smiting Fatty in Advanced Warfare holy shit that's when I got introduced to Hitch and like fast forward a couple years and like he moved into the the scuff house and I was like, yeah, holy shit. Hitch with Optic Intel. I said, that's before fucking Intel. <laughs> like, yeah, that's before Intel. Yeah. And like so when he moved in, it was nuts to me because I was like, I liked him when he first was like, no, dude, you do Optic IXI. Like, you know, Merc gets to play for both teams. They bend, they bend the rules. And like I was like, you know what? I like this guy. 
And then now it's Hitch. Like now he's a lot of, for a lot of people, like he's their favorite optic member. I think he almost he's should be. I think he almost should be just based on his story. If, if I would have thought about him earlier, he probably would have been in that list, like bro. He's, he's, he's definitely he's definitely top three. Like if I ever get a joint optic, like I get it. My story's not gonna be the same as his, but like the emotion behind the story, I feel like is gonna be the same. Like, oh yeah, bro. Oh man. All right. Um, so lastly, let's just kind of bullshit a little bit about a couple of things. Um, Halo season two just got announced dropping May 3rd. So that's in a few weeks here. Halo. This is one of the longest single seasons I've ever seen in a video game from December 8th on launch through May 3rd. We've seen a lot of players drop off. Um, I just saw a headline like yesterday or the day before saying that there's more concurrent players on Master Chief Collection on Steam right now than on Infinite. So what's the take? I noticed that. What's the take? Be blunt. If they don't drop new maps, if they don't drop new maps, they don't fucking, they don't, they don't fix this cheating bullshit. It's gonna end up like Warzone. So there are two new maps. They leaked those today. They didn't I leak did, them. I, I guess they, I, I guess they teased them today. And I, supposedly there's like a fly I've through been, of them. I saw like a couple of. Um, I've, I haven't seen it. Yeah, but I saw like a screenshot said, like, of one of them, but there are two new maps coming. There's rumors of a like an infinite battle pass that like doesn't actually have an end to it. It just keeps going. So that'll be interesting. I don't know how. I don't is that know kind of like prestige? Is that kind I'm of not, like? I think to, it's like, gonna be. Prestige? If it's actually pretty unique, it might be industry changing, because like. We had supply drops. Those were kind of a meta for a few years, and those oh, turned yeah. into the battle pass. Like battle passes are obviously meta right now, and they were obviously very industry changing and industry leading. If this infinite battle pass is actually a unique idea, I could see it maybe being like the next thing. Well, I have really little hopes for the battle pass because the battle pass they have right now is trash i think it was i think of the battle pass right now is good i think the problem is that it's been six it's fucking months well it's been six well, months and it hasn't changed if we got if you want to use any the battle pass you can't use your skins like yeah what the fuck well i think so like, imagine makes, if they had like this is, style battle pass but over the last six months we've gotten three of them four of them like, yeah, I, I don't think the problem is the battle pass. I think the problem is that it just lasted so long. I think I said that to you the other night when we were when we were playing. Like, we're still in beta. Like, I thought we'd be in season two already by yeah. now. Season three already. Um, no, I like, think the biggest news to come out of the recent announcement is um, they, they've they started working with a company called, I think, Critically Acclaimed is the name of the company. Um, and there's been some talk that highly indicates a Halo Battle Royale coming. Um, I saw a TikTok today Very from, uh, I think it was from Big Rob Energy, um, a TikTok going over some of the stuff in the announcement article that was like, this new game mode and our working with this new company is going to really look for players that like games like Warzone, Fortnite, and Apex Legends. And the code name for this game mode is apparently the name of a wrestler that is known for winning a WWE Battle Royale. And they even said it's going to be very Battle Royale-esque. Like, they're literally, without saying, hey, we're coming out with a Battle Royale, they're dropping every single, hey, we're coming out with a Battle Royale they can. And you know what I worry about? Same thing I worry about with Call of Duty. Everyone switching to Battle Royale and stopping playing the core game. Not just that, but the core fucking everything that that the Call of Duty does now is based upon Warzone, bro. Yeah. Like because it's their biggest maker. You're already not dropping DLCs or anything for six months, and now you're talking about you're going to come out with another game. Or not another game, but another mode See, that, that's going to go into this. Like, you better be coming out with a lot of shit at that same time then, or you're going to lose your whole fan base. My hope with it, 
one, I talked about this on episode two of this season with Sporty Kid. It's just arena I think, games, bro. I think the potential is higher, like for like what a good battle royale is. Halo has the highest possible ceiling. I hear, oh, your, most I hear your worry. It's definitely something to worry about because we've seen. I think as phenomenal as Warzone is, I think in many ways it's the worst thing to happen to Call of Duty. Um, yeah. at least competitive. I think the hope that I'm clinging on to is that they're getting a different company involved. If they execute it better than Call of Duty, because Call of Duty has too many companies involved, um, maybe it works. I don't know. I'm excited yeah, just because, like, well, how's hell, the movement going to be? Is the movement going to be different than the movement in the game? I think that Halo Infinite's movement is in such a way that it could be the same in a battle royale. Yeah, but if you get another company involved, you're talking about a whole nother fucking feel of a game. Well, I think if it all runs on the same engine, I think that the, matters. I think the engine exactly. plays the biggest factor in feel. Exactly. Exactly. Which I think it would have to run on the same engine. I think it'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happens when the problems with Call of Duty too, man, is that it it's not the same engine for every single competitive game that comes yeah. out of Call of Duty. So I don't know. I saw the news. I still need to read the, all the articles and, and figure it out. But it yet, yeah. I, I've literally been busy all day. That's why I was it's like, because oh, I, I have notifications to turned on for, I think, four Twitter accounts. And one of them is um, tweets, updates and shit like that. I don't remember which one. Um. Last couple of things. Uh, I was going to talk about Optic Valorant more. I don't know if we necessarily have to. I don't follow them enough to like really hold a conversation about it. Um, but all I've seen it. today is notifications from Optic and Hex. Those are two of the accounts I have notifications on for. Hey, I was baby. Saying that they're doing really well. Um, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, to lose every match but two. Uh, well, at least in the Masters. At least in the Masters, okay? So here's what happened. We're in the Masters, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to pronounce that city, so I'm not even going to try. Um, okay. well, it's in Iceland. Home, but home city? I, yeah, Iceland. Yeah, we're in Iceland. We went up against XIA, which is Xer... I don't know how to pronounce them. We lost to them. Okay. Then we went back in another match in which we won against... Uh, Man, my mind's going blank. We played another match and won that. Then we had to go against them again to make it into the playoffs. And we went up against Xeria again and dominated them. So if you want to talk about that we turned it around, yeah, we turned it around. Are we playing up to what everybody thought we were going to play at the Masters? Hell no. We were supposed to be the best NA team at the Masters. And gotcha. we are definitely not there right now. But I think what's crazy it, about it, games like CSGO and Valorant is there's for FPS games, god damn, there are some high endurance games. Like they last dude. so long sometimes. And like that's the hardest I think thing about there's it. Minutes, pros and cons to that. I feel like sometimes like you know a team could just run out of steam. And then they end up mm -hmm. losing. But on the flip side well, of that, if you have a game mode like Search and Destroy, which really doesn't last that long, nothing compared to like CSGO and Valorant matches, it's like the downside of having a really quick game is like sometimes in the losing team or like the poor, the worst team never has the chance to like warm up. I don't know. Right. And the other, and the other thing about the difference is too is like they play for the most part one match a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's horrible for viewership, but at the same time, like when Optic was playing, dude, Valorant I Masters think, was peaking 70, 70K views. Well, I on think Twitch, what Valorant I, has going for it right now is like not only is it a wildly popular game and, you know, it brings everything that we like about CSGO and those bomb based, round based game modes, but like also the hero shooter aspect. But on top of that, it's doing what Hex has always complained about with CSGO is like when CSGO started doing like weekly matches and it was constant, it's like you lose interest because you're getting too much of it. 
Yeah, just like the UFC. I feel yeah, like he always makes that that uh, comparison. I feel like right now Valorant's in a place where they can decide if they want to do that or if they want to keep it spread out. I think, I mean, everything is indicated that they should keep it spread out. I think they should with the events like they're doing and yeah. leave it like that. Yeah, like I think if they don't change it, they have a, a really good thing going for them. Plus, what I do hate CSGO has been out for fact, 20 fucking years. It's time for a switch up. What I do hate right now is the fact that we haven't had a Call of Duty match in almost a month. Is it? It's only been like two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Three weeks is like a month. Three, four weeks, is depending uh, we're, on the we're, month. We're, you know hey, hey, we're getting. When's, when's the next major, by the way? Um, next month. That's what I'm saying. It's gonna be a month. But when? Like, is really? it the beginning of May? The next major starts in the beginning of May on like the fourth. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised how close major one and two were together. That was too close yeah, for I my liking the most. They should have spread it out a little bit so think, there wasn't this month-long gap. I think six weeks is prime. Every six weeks. Hey, I don't know. Could be wrong. We're, we're still in the infancy of the league and everything. Like, we're only three years in. Do you know what we're missing right now while we're doing this podcast? What are we missing? Is someone, are they playing? The phase invitation. The Ooh. Halo phase invitation. Um, I really want to go to a Halo or? event. Um, at some point, Halo. Yeah, but they're not anywhere near anything important. You Kansas City. I'll uh, say so yeah, Kansas. Oh, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like they're not in any of like. Well, they had Anaheim. Anaheim just got canceled because COVID. Uh But the last event, yeah, the I last one they, I, no, the last event they did. Anaheim. Yeah. Well, okay, they didn't cancel I mean, it. They canceled it for spectators. Yeah. Because yeah, I was okay, gonna, I was it. gonna go to it. Um. Yeah, but this is California for me, man. Hey, the Anaheim's my event, baby. One, it's the best event ever, best event. bar none, unfucking rivaled. One could probably yeah. say that like Major Five probably came pretty damn close. From everything I've heard, like Major Five was that insane. But the vibes at Anaheim were different. Um, and two, it's the easiest for me to get to, so I'm a little biased. Now, yeah. Last thing I want to talk about before we give you the hot ones moment. And this is going to segment segue straight into the hot ones thing. Um, optic uplink for those of you that are still listening. Those of you that have made it this far into the episode, Brandon here token does have his own channel and, um, he's going to tell us a little bit about it right now. He has a segment called optic uplink. Um, I have a segment on that that is called behind the bricks where we shout one of you guys out, a green wall member. um, so tell us a little bit about Optic Uplink, what it is that you're doing, what some of your plans for it are. Um, and then I guess right after that, if if I don't have anything to chime in with, you can also just kind of like shout yourself anyway, out and stuff. Yeah, yeah like we'll, just, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but for now, just tell us about Optic Uplink, what it is, the core of it, what you hope to do with it, et cetera. Optic Uplink is... The core of it is is kind of like esports talk, but just optic. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to cover everything on optic. Um, you know, we got Dallas News out there. That's the main reporter of optic gaming, yep. you know, from NB. But I mean, who really reads a newspaper anymore? Uh, I was just saying you know, they do. Know? They s- specialize mostly in written content, though. Yeah, it's written content, you know, and I want to I want to get get it out there quick. In a quick fashion, little segment videos of just letting you guys know what's going on with Optic and what's going on with the teams. For instance, our last episode, we didn't have any CDL majors coming up, so we covered everything that was Valorant. And this episode coming up, we're cov- or not everything Valorant, we covered everything Halo. And this episode, we're covering everything in Valorant. So, um, you know, I mean, that's what it basically is about, is just, you know, quick little content letting you guys know about it. Like an update. It's like an update. Yeah. Just like Optic Update. It's Optic Uplink. We're letting you know everything you need to know in about five minutes. Yeah. And what I like about it, like personal opinion, like obviously, you know, Brandon's a guest here on the podcast. Uh, much love for the guy. But like I've told him this in private many a times. Like the thing that I love about it, it's like five minutes. Like I very rarely sit down and watch YouTube videos anymore. Um, two years mm-hmm. ago, a year and a half ago or so, I decided all the content all the time I spent watching content needed to be spent making content. 
And I've been pretty mediocre about that up until this year. This year, we've been fucking killing it. Pat myself on the back for that one. Um, But the thing I love about it, it's like three to maybe like six minutes. And Mm -hmm. I get to get caught up on all the matches that I never get to watch because I'm at work on the weekends. Um, I get to get caught up on uh, anything going on with rosters or league updates or games like it's a quick update. It's super efficient. Um, I think it's actually, I told you this right before we started. I think you've executed it really well. Um, considering you're pretty new that. to the, the content creation process yeah, and everything. My first channel, man. Um, you obviously have a, a pretty established Twitter following to help feed in a little bit. Um, maybe it's not going as well as you would like it to yet, but it's, I don't know. I, I mean, like I it. Mean, I think I like it in person. I got yeah. 67 drivers already, and I think that's actually that's pretty solid. damn No, that's good. pretty good. That's pretty, You've only it's, been doing this for like... I'm just hard on myself. Me too. I'm a chef, so that's like... I'm so it's, hard it's on myself. In, yeah, like, it's in the bones. I'm not getting a subscriber a day. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know? I mean, that's yeah. something that like... In the years I've been doing this, like... The, the video that I actually recorded this morning right before work that I need to um, edit and still post. It was supposed to go up today, but that ain't going to happen is me reacting to my first YouTube or my first uh, montage that was uploaded in 2012. My first YouTube video was uploaded in 2011. So if there's one thing that I've learned in 11 years of very inconsistently posting content, it is to be patient and, and to appreciate when things are going well. Um, yeah. So I don't know for you guys that are watching link in the description, as always, to all of his socials, all of his information, um, and the that. YouTube channel. So go check it out. Especially if you guys are busy, like a lot of us are these days. Like I feel like Optics fan base, um, average age is twenty plus now. We're all busy with work and jobs and everything. If you guys don't have time to watch okay. all the matches like you used to in high school, uh, Optic Uplink is definitely the place to go for your updates. And with that said, appreciate that. Um, if you want to do the hot ones thing now, give yourself a quick shout out. Tell people what you're up to, what your plans are, where to find you across social media, and we'll close the sucker out. Hell yeah. Um, I just, you know, I'm just out there trying to get my channel started. You know, you can follow me on Intel Optic Texas on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitch at The Bricks, T H E 3 B R I C K Z. And the same thing for the YouTube channel. T-H-3-B-R-I-C-K-Z, the bricks. Um, also, uh, he has a super awesome Discord server. So uh, I'll oh. link that as well. Um, it's something I've talked to you and uh, what's the name? Um, Liz. Liz. Yeah. Uh, the concept of it is super cool. It's got all the things that I wanted to do with my Discord when I created it. Uh, I'm just bad at growing discord, yeah, which I mean, in anyone's defense, like most people will tell you hard. Discord's one of the hardest communities to grow. Um, it's hard. And I think what he, what his idea with that was, was amazing. He actually came to me about it. Okay. Um, we just really want, let me shout him out really quick while I, while I'm thinking about it. Sliz AP dope ass dude, UK guy. He reminds me a lot about tapt- like tactical rap. But he really wants to just get all the people in the green wall together, all of us out here creating content, you know, Yo, instead maybe, of working solo. Maybe we'll do a, a two-part behind the together. brick on this segment. Behind the yeah, brick, because you know, this is going to air is after this after this episode um, or after your next episode of uh, Optic Uplink. But, like, for those that yeah. are watching, behind the bricks is going to be, you know, you, obviously, Token, Brandon, um, and Sliz. I'm going to shout both you guys out for, for the discord. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that, man. I mean, I, and, and the behind the brick, when, when, when we, when we talked about doing that, that was strictly just so that we could, we could, you know, really spotlight, not everybody out there, but just people we've noticed, you know, we want to spotlight all the green wallers from yeah. all over the, the country. I, love it. I, I mean, I appreciate that you guys like asked me to do it for for the channel well i mean and that and that was one of the things like like i said that we're trying to bring the the green wall the bricks together the ones that are out here trying to make content to work together because if we can work together we all can get a lot farther yeah you know teamwork make the dream work baby Um, also i'm gonna give myself a little shout out here uh before we close this out go to 1v1.com use code astro get 20 percent off your order 
currently partnered with uh, 1v1 Focus uh, Performance Gaming Drink. Uses a proprietary mushroom blend of ingredients that actually have been scientifically researched to help you in all the areas that matter gaming related. We're talking reaction time, focus, energy, all those things. Mushrooms are the key. Um, so go to 1v1.com, use code Astro, get 20% off your order. And of course, you help me out a little bit as well. And with that being said, I'm going to have to go buy that. Brandon, Token, thank you for joining me on this episode. Thank you, everybody that's watching or listening. If you've made it this far, I appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like, share it around with your friends and family that are Optic members. If you guys have any Optic members, if you guys are interested in coming on the podcast yourself, you guys know where to find me, twitter.com slash astronauticalm. I'm probably going to shorten that up at some point. But that's it. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out.